This is Tall Tale TV, your podcast for sci-fi and fantasy short stories. Operum Morte Ventum, written by Rajdeep Biswas, performed by Chris Heron. I used to pass across the gravelly sidewalk adjacent to the clockworks on my way back from school every alternate weekday. It was usually a quick walk, because I couldn't really stand how the air reeked of chainsaw dust from whatever they were sawing in there. It used to be every day instead of every other, until they discontinued the peace treaty that let us, shreds, get education or work alongside your old-school regular humans. Now it's just regulars that are allowed to work and commute on even weekdays, and naturally we get the odd ones. Although it wasn't always so. Back in my grandfolks' days, things looked harmonious, and everything worked as perfectly as that dial on your wristwatch. But that was only before Tuesday the 28th, as my grandpa once narrated. One of the glasshouse nurses had been missing for a week. It was only that evening when she was to be found around the back of the infirmary, electrocuted with her gas mask missing. They accused old Barry, one of the janitors that worked for the glass house. He was a shred, too, of course. There was no reason for anyone to even suspect that a regular could kill another one of their kind, especially since the last reported murder was way back in 2159. Barry was taken prisoner and immediately de-shredded, and his life was left to the mercy of the new gods. And that was it. Not another regular would walk the streets without the perpetual fear of a shred vaporizing their blood, just as what had happened to the nurse. They even stopped addressing us as shreds. To begin with, they would rather just stick to the formal surgeon tongue and call us bionics, or just cyborgs, in fear of provoking us of what we have become. It wasn't like we decided to be augmented by choice. It all started back in the mid-2020s, when the last few millions of humanity decided to try one ultimate shot at stopping the coronavirus from continuing to mutate beyond containing. No vaccine would take effect anymore. Lumotherapy stopped working, and it was impossible to not breathe it in after when it evolved unexpectedly to get airborne. It was remarkable French virologist Arturo Boucher who we owe to. It was his radical but extraordinary idea to poison the air with bioxides of copper thalmate, which would ultimately kill the virus that was still in the air. The city's sewage system was engineered in reverse to pump the oxides out everywhere, while the privileged grabbed gas masks and hid, trembling in terror. The others just prayed to the old gods that they could survive the gas. After all, Boucher had assured that it wouldn't immediately affect humans, and turns out he was right, albeit only temporarily. The last of us that were still untouched by the virus would be the ones that lived to tell the tale. Few of the remaining infected recovered, and most others perished. However, what we hadn't precedented was that the present atmosphere was going to end up irreversible and unbreathable. This wasn't realized until nearly three decades later when a whole new breed of parasites started to thrive in the cuprate atmosphere and would start lacerating humans who breathed in too much of the copper air. They got to your skin and fed on it from the inside, to the point amputations had to be made. Limbs and organs were to be shredded off and replaced with contraptions. Luckily, the government or whatever form of it was left, 
had no option but to make accessible organ replacements for the affected, with prosthetics and augmentations, free of charge. Automobile companies provided the amputation chainsaws. Muscles of limbs were made mechanical, while hearts and lungs were steam-powered, which enabled us to breathe without any external apparatus, which, ironically, is the only reason we prefer not being normal people. To this day, I take the same path as my childhood. I see young regulars in love, faces concealed in gas masks, families and little children of theirs playing in parks, all eerily faceless. I work at the glass house now. Our job is to operate and maintain the incubation vats that we keep and feed the newborns in until they're old enough to put on gas masks. By the next decade, it's expected we finish research on exolungs for all babies, making them biologically adaptive to breathing the cupric oxides. I change out of my work gear, covered in glue and gunk, and oftentimes spot under five size gas masks. Funny, almost always makes me feel sorry for the last few generations. An entire century and a half of them that never saw the day of light without a protective glass tunnel visioning them. Rajdeep Biswas doesn't consider himself much of a writer but likes to dabble in the art casually. After looking for steampunk narratives on YouTube, he stumbled across Tall Tale TV and quickly became a fan. Now, he's just thrilled to be featured on the channel and hopes you all enjoyed his story. Hey guys, so <laughs> it's bound to happen eventually, a COVID-19 story. <laughs> Hopefully nobody found this in poor taste. When I talked to Rajdeep, he really seemed to be concerned about what was going on and just wanted to bring to light a little bit more awareness of the subject. It's a bit ironic that I had it planned to put out today because my co-worker's wife just came down with COVID-19. So now there's talks at my plant about, are we going to shut down if he comes out positive? So I won't know until the story is posted, at which point we'll find out if he was contagious or not. As a diabetic, this issue is extremely important to me. I'm at very high risk. I've been a type 1 since I was the age of 7. Type 1 diabetes is the genetic disorder, where my pancreas basically tries to eat its own beta cells. So it's not the dietary type, where type 2 can basically treat it like that. I have to take insulin shots multiple times a day, and every month I have to go in for eye injections to keep from going blind. So, I'm in pretty bad shape already, and then something like COVID-19 could be pretty bad for an individual like me. I'm not saying this to get any sort of sympathy. I've made peace with my disease a long time ago, and my control is actually pretty good now, so I'm doing well. But I say this because... I personally know a lot of people who don't want to wear masks, and they say it's because it's inconvenient or it's not as bad as the flu. While that may be the case for some, it's a potential death sentence to somebody like me. So, if you're on the fence about masks, please just consider wearing one to help protect the individuals out there like me. There's not a lot that I can do to protect myself short of not going into town, which I already do. But we all have to do some stuff out there. This isn't meant to be a political statement. I'm not choosing one side or the other. and I think this is more scientific than that. And in the end, if it's all fake, wonderful. All we had to do was put a funky piece of cloth on our face for a couple of months. Not the end of the world, just a bit annoying. But if it is real, you could save lives just by wearing a mask. I'll leave it at that. I hope I didn't rant too long. I'm Chris Heron, and that's it for today's Tall Tale TV. Tall Tale TV.